Okay, so we're at the end of the special relativity section and we've just one last topic to cover and that's relativistic mechanics. So we want to, to hang on to the ideas of Newtonian mechanics. So Newton's laws told us that the rate of change of momentum, dp by dt, was equal to the force acting on a particle. Okay, so, uh, and momentum, P is equal to the mass of a body times its velocity. Okay, so this tells us that um, a bus is more difficult to stop than a bumblebee traveling at the same velocity. Okay, we need to apply a larger force because the, the momentum of the bus traveling at velocity V will be larger than the bee. Okay, because the mass of the bus will be larger than the mass of the bee. Okay, so momentum is more fundamental really in mechanics than velocity and certainly in special relativity. We see this is the case. Okay, but in classical mechanics where we have these expressions, if the momentum gets large, this implies that the velocity gets large or vice versa. Okay, so let's think about what happens when the momentum tends to infinity. Then this means the velocity must tend to infinity. But of course we know in special relativity that we have a speed limit. It's the speed of light. Okay, so as um, V approaches the speed of light, this needs adjusting. Okay, or it needs thought. Um, so it turns out that in special relativity, uh, for this to be true, we need to adjust something. Okay, and that's something that we need to adjust is the mass. And it turns out we'll find that um, as an object goes faster, its mass changes. Okay, and to do that, we look at the collisions of two particles. So we study the collision between two particles. So, okay, so as well as Newton's laws, this Newton's second law, we also want that the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum should be conserved, okay, just like you're used to. Okay, so these are concepts that we, we want to keep and it seems perfectly reasonable to keep. Okay, so what we do is we think about adjusting, so this is classically, okay, so in classical mechanics V can go to infinity but in special relativity it can't. Um, so in special relativity, we want to think about P as being the mass times the velocity and then some function. Okay, and let's think about a function of velocity. And if we think about a function of velocity, we need that this function of velocity goes to one when V goes to zero. Okay, so when we approach non-relativistic velocities, we just get back what we see in our everyday experience. Okay, and we note also that this function f is dimensionless. Okay, because if something has units of momentum, dimensions of momentum, and you get that something by something with units of mass and velocity, then this thing can change the dimensions. Okay, so if, if this expression is dimensionally correct, then the only way for this to be dimensionally correct is if this thing is dimensionless. Okay, so f tends to 1 as v tends to 0 and is dimensionless. So the job is to find what this function is, and to do so we consider, so we consider the collision of two particles. Okay, so let's call them m1, so they have masses m1 and m2, and velocities v1 and v2. Okay, so we've got two bodies colliding. Um, m1 with v1, m2 with v2, and then after the collision, they have m3, v3, and m4, v4. Okay, so we're going to let their masses change. 
and considering this collision will tell us what this function is. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to write down the conservation of momentum, okay, and uh, of mass, okay, so the masses should, m1 plus m2 should equal m3 plus m4, okay, so that's conservation of mass, and we should have that the conservation of energy, sorry, of momentum, so m1 v1 plus m2 v2, that's the initial total momentum, should equal the final momentum, which is m3 v3 plus m4 v4. Okay, so we've got two things going in and two things coming out. These are the things going in and these are the things going out. Okay, but we previously introduced a thing called four velocity. And this four velocity is a four vector, it's v mu, and it's a four vector that has gamma v, and then there's a c in the first component, and then it's v, the three velocity. Okay, so this is a four vector that has the gamma in front of all four components, and the first component c, and the components one, two, and three are this three vector v. So this is the, just the standard vx, vy, and vz that you've seen with velocity before. Okay, with this introduced, we can write both of these equations as one equation. And that equation takes the form, um, so if we have m1, if we divide by gamma, and gamma depends on the velocity, so it's gotta be a v1, and we need a v1 so we have a, this is the four vector, v mu one. Okay, so if we think about the zeroth component, this is c times gamma. So the zeroth component, so mu equals zero, has c times gamma. So this is m c gamma divided by gamma. So this is m c, so m one times c. So if we multiply this first equation by c, C is a constant, so it won't change, okay? So you can see by looking at the zeroth component that we reproduce the m1 times c. And then we have a plus m2, and then it's the four velocity of the second one, gamma v2, okay? This is the, the speed v1 and the speed v2, and this equals m3, the four velocity for the third particle over the gamma with the speed of the third particle plus the mass of the fourth particle and the four velocity of the fourth particle over gamma of the fourth particle involving the speed. And remember gamma of v is equal to one over the square root one minus beta squared, where beta is uh, u over c, okay? Or v over c here. Okay, so we thought about the zeroth component giving us mc and the gammas cancelled, so the gamma c divided by gamma um, will just give us c. And if you think about the other components, the mu equals one, two, and three, then the v mu, the four vector, will be gamma times v for those components. So you get m1 with a vx or a vy or vz, okay? And again, the gammas cancel, so this re reproduces this second start equation. Okay, so hopefully you are happy with the fact that this thing contains both of the equations above. Okay, now if I take the, these two things to the left-hand side, then I have an expression that is the sum from i equals one to four. That's, and i is the particle index, so particle one, two, three, and four. And each has some constant, let's call it a, i, and a i is m i divided by gamma v i times the four vector v 
i mu and this equals zero okay and a i for so yes let me write it so a one and two will equal m one and two divided by gamma v one or two and a three and four will have a minus sign minus m um, three or four divided by gamma v three or four okay because we've taken these things to the left hand side okay so i'll keep the bottom part of the board but let me erase the top Okay, so we said that we've got this equation. So the sum from one to four of a i some constant. This is just the ratio of the mass over gamma. Maybe with a minus sign if we're dealing with particles three and four. The four velocity v i mu equals zero. Okay, now this should be true in any frame. So we can change to a different frame. So let's call this frame S. In S bar, a different frame, we have that a similar sum from one to four, so a sum that loops over the labels of the particles. So we're thinking about particle one, two, three, and four. We've got a different constant now, AI bar, and we've got the four velocity mu in the barred system, and this should be zero, okay? because we didn't say what frame we were in when we wrote this down, so it must be true in all frames. Okay, so these AI bars here are just like these things, but A1, two bar is now M1 or two bar, divided by gamma V bar, one or two. Okay, and the three and four just have the minus sign in front. Okay, so we're saying that in a different frame, maybe our mass can change and the velocity we know is different. Okay, so this is, this is the speed, the three velocity um, magnitude. That's the argument of gamma. Okay, here. Okay, so it's use the speed, we're calling it V here. Okay, so we've got two equations that just describe the same thing in different frames, but we know how to transform from one frame to another, we use the Lorentz transformation. Okay, so we know that V bar mu, the four velocity in the barred frame, is equal to a Lorentz transformation, lambda mu nu V nu. Okay, and this is true in general, so we can put a particle index on it if we want, and this just labels the particle. Okay, so particle one, the four velocity of particle one in the Bard system is the Lorentz transformation matrix times the four velocity of particle one in the unbarred system. So with this, we can write this second equation differently. We can write it as, um, so we can write this S as the sum from I equals one to four, A I bar, lambda, mu, nu, and then the four velocity with an index nu, and it's for each particle i equals zero, okay? Now the four vector, sorry, the, the Lorentz transformation only acts on the four vector, so we can pull it out. These are just constants, okay? So this implies that lambda, mu, nu, the sum of i equals one to four, a i bar, four velocity of the ith particle equals zero. Okay. Um, so let's call this thing Q of nu. So this tells us that lambda mu nu Q of nu equals zero. Okay, and we can multiply by the inverse Lorentz matrix, which is lambda um, mu 
alpha, say. Okay, and the mu's and alphas disappear. And this acting on the right hand side on zero does nothing. So this is the inverse. This is delta alpha nu, q nu, which equals q alpha, which equals zero. So we can say that this thing in the bracket, which we called q, okay, this thing in the bracket is q, must be zero. So the thing in the bracket is zero. Okay, so this equals uh, the sum i from one to four, a i bar, new, sorry, the four velocity for the ith particle with space time index new. So that's zero, okay. So what we found is that the sum from i equals one to four, of a i nu i mu equals zero. That was the first equation. But we also know that, know that this thing equals zero too. So this is sum of i equals one to four a i bar, but the same four velocity i, and we can call it whatever we want to an index. So let's call it mu, okay. So this is an expression of four velocities. Okay, so they have to have the same index on the left-hand side as the right-hand side. Now, this can only be true for arbitrary velocities if the ai and ai bars are equal. Okay, so we have to find that ai equals ai bar. And ai is mi over gamma v i and m i bar is m bar i over gamma v bar i. Okay, so we've nearly got our result. Okay, so we've got an expression that relates the mass and the gamma factor of a particle in one frame to another frame. Okay, so we got it by considering the collision of two particles, but this just involves one particle, it's the ith particle. Okay, so we can drop the index i, and this tells us that um, m i equals m bar i divided by gamma v bar i, gamma v i. Okay, so the mass in the unbarred frame is related to the mass in the barred frame by this ratio of the gamma factors. So let's think about frame S bar as the rest frame of particle I, okay? Um, so yeah, let me drop the I's. Okay, this is true for any particle. So frame S is the rest frame. Frame S bar is the rest frame. So in the rest frame, we have that gamma of V bar is equal to one. Okay, because remember gamma of V is equal to one over the square root of one minus V squared over C squared. So if the particle's at rest, then V is zero, and you have um, that gamma is equal to one. So this means that the mass m equals the rest mass, okay, the mass in the rest frame, times gamma v. Okay, so this is an important result. So it's told us how we have changed our momentum definition. So let me uh, rub it out, I'll keep this. Um, so keep this in your mind, m equals m bar gamma and I can get rid of all the detail that we've used to get to it. Okay, so we know that the mass of a particle moving is equal to its rest mass times gamma um, that depends on the velocity. So we wrote down that P was equal to mv 
the three momentum equals the mass times the velocity. Um, and we said in special relativity we need something else, some function, some dimensionless quantity to adjust this. Okay, and we find that the right result is equal to m bar gamma v v. Okay, so here our mass is our rest mass. Okay, the m bar. And we can take m bar gamma, the rest mass times gamma, as our mass. So we can keep p equals mv, provided that we recognize m as equal to the rest mass times gamma of v. Okay, and if we think about our four velocity, v mu, this is equal to gamma of v um, and the four vectors c and v. Okay, if we multiply this by the rest mass, so we have an m bar and an m bar. Okay, uh, maybe let's call the rest mass m0 instead of the bar. Okay, then we can identify this thing as the four momentum, p mu is m0, the rest mass, times the four velocity. So this is the four momentum. This is the rest mass, and this is the four velocity. Okay. okay, and we recognize this as just the component, so the, the uh, mu equals one, two, three components of this equation. Okay, so this becomes um, m zero gamma c and gamma times v, v, sorry, that's a, a speed, okay. So, m gamma, we can call m, so m, this is the rest mass times gamma, which is just the mass, and then we've got a gamma times v, which we know is just the three velocity, p. Sorry, m0 is missing. Yep, m0 gamma times v is equal to the three velocity p. Okay, m0 gamma times v. So this, these are two different, or well, a few different expressions for our four momentum. Okay, so we found that our four momentum is equal to this. Okay, so we have p mu equals m c p three vector. So we can think about the Newton's law, so the rate of change of momentum is force. So we can think about dp mu by dt, okay, which is um, c, speed of light, dm by dt, how the mass changes in time. And then dp by dt, dp three vector by dt is just the force f, okay, from Newton's laws. Okay, but, this thing is not a four vector because mu, the p mu is a four vector, but dt is not invariant because we know that time um, transforms under the Lorentz transformation. Okay, so we, instead of dt, we introduce um, our proper time, d tau. Okay, and we find that we've got dp mu by d tau equals uh, gamma c dm by dt f. And this thing is a four vector, and we call this thing the four force f mu. Okay, this is the four force. Okay, it's a four vector, and it relates the rate of change of four momentum with proper time to the four force. Okay. 
Okay, and it's established by experiment that this is the correct formulation of mechanics under special relativity. Okay, so this is all legit. Okay, so next we'll consider the relationship between mass and energy. Um, further, and this is one of Einstein's uh, famous results. Okay, people wear t-shirts with the results um, of the next section. Um, on the, and then after that, we'll think about collision problems, thinking about the conservation of this guy, this for momentum. Okay, so just like energy and momentum has to be cons conserved, this all translates into conservation of four momentum. Okay, so the four momentum conservation encapsulates energy and momentum conservation. Okay, keep going. Okay, so to recap our relativistic mechanics, we wanted to keep P, the three vector, equals mv, mass times velocity. And we find by considering collisions that this mass must equal the rest mass m0 times gamma v and gamma as we know depends on the square root so 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared okay that's a dimensionless number dimensionless quantity okay um, so we have that p is equal to m0 gamma v v. Okay, this is one key result. And we find that um, Newton's second law in a relativistic sense becomes dp mu four vector by d tau, the proper time, equals the four force f mu. So this is a four vector equation. Okay, and p mu is our four momentum. Okay, and this equals m zero uh, v mu, where this is the four velocity. And our four velocity is equal to gamma of v c in the first component, and then the three velocity v in the uh, mu equals one, two, and three components. So this is our four momentum. Okay, so we've got that d by d tau of this thing equals f of mu. Okay, so this is an important relation. So is this. And we can think about um, this thing a bit more. So this f of mu is dp mu by the proper time. So this is d by the proper time of p of mu, which is above, it's here. Um, so we can write this thing as equal to mc p, three vector. So p, so mc is m0 times gamma, that's m. And m0 gamma v is equal to three vector p. Okay, so our four momentum has an mc in the first component and the three vector p in the other component. So dp mu by d tau is d by d tau of mc p which is uh, C dm by d tau in the first component. And then dp by dt is the three force f, vector f, okay? fx, fy, fz. Okay, so this f, this three force f is equal to um, d by d tau of m0, gamma v v okay and this is not equal to m a acceleration f we call acceleration to the left because d by d proper time of this involves 
um, a derivative of this plus this plus a derivative of this uh, times this. Okay, so you get two terms when you differentiate. Okay, so three force in a special relativistic formulation is not proportional to mass times acceleration. Okay, so next comes Einstein's uh, mass-energy relationship. Um,